and let them have dominion. The kingdom of God is within people. It's the advancement of the people that is advancing. Because the faith must be backed by the assignment of this ministry is found from that verse. Where we You're unto a word encounter as Pastor David Ogweli ministers God's word to you with simplicity and power. God bless you. He created them to control the earth, to control the circumstances on earth, just like God controls the heavenly. Welcome your presence, wonderful Holy Spirit. Have your way here tonight. Have your way here this night. In Him was life, and that life was the light of men. And that light shines in darkness, and darkness comprehends it not. We exalt you today. We magnify your name. Come and start us off. In this new beginning with your presence with your wisdom with the strong illumination of your spirit enable us to obtain dominion over every form of darkness not only in our lives but in this world that we live in father we give you thanks like David the psalm, the psalm he said he said thou shall lighten my darkness and by that inward enlightenment, I will run through a troop. I will jump over a wall. Father, we give you thanks today. Flood our hearts with light this year. Let no unfruitful works of darkness come out of our lives. Let us live in the, la- the realm of light so much that the powers of evil will not be able to have any hold or influence on our lives. Or be able to affect our cause. Let your kingdom come through us this year. Let your will be done. Use us to flood this nation, this city with light. Use us to flood the families of this nation with light. Glorify your name through us this year. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. First Peter chapter 2 verse 9. Can we read out together? One, two, go. But ye are a choosing generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you should proclaim the praises of him, who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Uh, 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 Is there anyone that said out of the darkness of this world? Any translation like that? Okay, just called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. There's a good song that goes with that. I want it to be in your spirit from the beginning to the end of the service and then keep singing when you go home. We are choosing generation, a royal priest, a holy nation, a peculiar people to show for the praises of Him who has called us out of the darkness. Out of the darkness, out of the darkness, into his marvelous light, into his marvelous light. How many of you know it? We are choosing generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. People to show for the praises of Him who has called us out of the darkness, out of the darkness, out of the darkness, into His marvelous light. Thank you. 
I sing it one more time. We are the chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people to show for the raisins of him who has called us. Ever seen a Christian in the realm of the spirit? Christians in the realm of the spirit look like angels. They don't look differently. I had two experiences. One in 1986, I think, or 87. Um, we went for a crusade and something happened. We made an altar call one of those nights, and you know, I, I had something during the revival of the 80s. I was pastoring a campus fellowship. We broke all the records on campus at that time. It grew to become the fastest uh, growing fellowship on campus. W why? Because w some of the amazing things that began to happen in the meetings, Jesus began to appear to people in many of our meetings. Sunday meetings like this. We have the meetings in the evening, not in the morning. We come for meetings. A lot of people get slain in the spirit and they can't get up. I'm not talking about falling under the power. There's a big difference between falling under the power and being slain. When people are slain, they look like dead people. They are carried out. We're going to see some of these things in these days. Now, there was one particular case that got slain. Fellowship ended three hours after he was still on the floor. It was a cold boy that visited for the first time. His girlfriend gave her life to Christ and he came around. I think he heard something. The testimony when he told it, it wasn't really serious, but he came out. He came out to test falling under the power. And many a time, God ignores such people. But for some reason, somebody has been praying for him. The girl has been praying for him. And some other people have been praying for him. Jesus decided. So he said he saw a man in white. Just slap him off. He didn't slap him this way. I mean, blow him off, you know. And then three hours after the service has closed, you know, evening meeting, 4 p.m. By 7, we are through. People had gone back. People were going back to classes to read in the evening. That was Sunday evening. They had to come and call me. I've left the environment. This guy is still there. So some of his friends waited, thinking he was going to get up. He couldn't get up. Now, I've had cases where people are peeing to the floor. And you have a group of six people trying to lift one person, and they can't. We, we have to get ready for some of these things again. Uh, because there are, some, there are some levels of encounter you have. You can't just be the same. In one of those meetings, I made an altar call. A number of people answered. And we sang a few more songs to allow others in case they were not coming out to come. And no more person came out. So I closed my eyes to pray for the ones that came in the front. And then my eyes opened. And the Lord said, there are still some individuals in the congregation. I think there were about seven. I said, so what am I supposed to do? He said, this time around, not only that you tell them to come forward, but... I'm going to show you who they are because some of them will not come forward. So I said, okay. So he said, look at the congregation. So I looked. And the whole congregation was filled with angels. It was amazing to me that day. The whole congregation was filled with angels without wings. People in white. They were all shining lights. And so he said, look, any person that is dark that you see in the system, Go walk up to their seat and pull them out. That will be a sign to them that I'm calling them. So I, I told them, I said, the Lord is giving you the last chance. Come up and give your life to Christ. And of course, nobody moved. I said, okay. So I, I walked in and pulled out the seven of them. And they will come out crying because they didn't understand how. Um, uh, you know, some of them were coming for the first time. Three of them were actually boys in confraternities and they, they remain in the faith one that we call that we call him pastor Sharpest. he ended up a pastor he ended up a pastor 
they remained in the faith. They didn't backslide because of the way the Lord brought them. And so I, 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 I looked and I saw who they were. They didn't have that glow. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. It's not, it's not, it's not a joke. It's not just a, a, one of those cliches, you know, to describe us because we do good deeds. No, it's actually how we look in the realm of the spirit. That's how Satan knows who is his and who is not. He said, the, this is a worthy saying. This is a true saying and worthy of all acceptance. This statement is true and everybody should accept it. What is that statement? That the Lord knows those that are his. And then he now said, let everyone, oh, he said the, 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 the kingdom of God uh, uh, stand there sure, having this seal. They say a seal. And if you read the book of Ephesians, he said that when we give our life to Christ, we are sealed. What are we sealed with? The scripture explains that. He said we are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. And that Holy Spirit comes inside us. It causes illumination. It's an illuminating personality. Then that seal in the realm of the Spirit becomes your mark. When he said, touch not my anointed, do my prophet no harm. The devil knows who they are and who they are not. He's not in claiming it, in saying it. He knows who they are. Knows who they are. Occult people that have eyes that can see. No, not baby occult men and all that. The ones that know what they're doing. They know who is who. They know the untouchables on earth. Native doctors that know their worth. It's not every sacrifice you bring for them, human ritual that they take. They know people that are not for money rituals. They know people that are not, you can't use them to make charms. They know such people. They know people that you bring on the altar, the altar bows. Your Christianity must have essence. If not, you become like fowl for the eagles of the air to eat. You become like food for evil spirits. It must have essence. Twice it has happened to me. It happened to me one other time in another meeting. This, and two of them happened in the 80s. And uh, the, the revival of the 80s was hot. There, were, there, there has been the revival of the 70s. We all talk about then the revival of the 80s. I was neck deep into it. We were part of those that championed it in this country. And I, I got born again in the revival of the 70s as it was ending. And it was, it was something else. I sold my whole youth to the Lord and he didn't disappoint me. He didn't disappoint me. Oh. Even if I meet you and you're a native doctor, it hasn't changed me. It hasn't getting me, you know, getting me born again backward. Why should darkness overpower light? Unless you are willing. If you are willing to surrender your light, that's a different thing. But beyond all that, I have made up my mind long ago. I said, if Kenny Hagen, as, as at the time he was alive, he decides Jesus is no more the Lord, I'm the Lord, it won't affect me. This thing is not a second-handed thing to me. You see some of the things I'm sharing with you. In those days, you know how I used to return back to school? School resumption date will be announced. I would tell my friend we're in a group who were God chasers. We will return two weeks before the resumption date. UNN was surrounded by hills. Guess where we stay? The hostels are not open. We will carry mat, gallon of water. And many times, especially the January, you know, the resumption after Christmas, Hamatan, that place is towards the north. We we'll go with dust. Sometimes when we are coming down, we are going to burn two weeks fasting and prayer. Sometimes eating fruits, within, sometimes drinking juice. Many a time for days, not, nothing. We're just drinking water. And, you know, what are you crying about? You're not asking God for school fees. You're not asking for money. You're not asking for healing. You don't need, you're not asking, you're not sick. You are just asking God. Open my eyes that I will know your word. I want to know you. Open my eyes to know the Holy Spirit. That's when we started these things. I see a whole hall go under the power. We have had camp meetings, and some, some, some of you who, who, who know us before, now, we're angels singing in meetings, and people are hearing it. How many of you have been in any of those meetings? This, these are not, did I pay them? Do you think I paid them? 
I mean, things that will happen and thousands of people will experience it. How do you get, this is God, God. So do you come and talk to a, a person like me about God as an figment of imagination? Do you tell me about Da Vinci Code and Christianity? I know a Jesus that rose from the dead. It might be a theory to you. I know him as a person. He's the same small boys, those us, that we are crying after him, that he's now using to shake the world now. See what he's using us to do all over the nations. I've not seen any man who went after God who can be obscured in his destiny. No, 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 no. A thousand times no. What some people have done, because I remember some of the friends we had, some people have done this. They take one step forward and turn backward. Then they repent two years after and say bye-bye to one girl they've been living with or one man and then come back to church or join whatever and then they take three steps then they take that backward. At the end of the day, you balance the account. You know, when you withdraw money and you deposit money, and it, every time you, you withdraw 300000 but when you want to deposit, you deposit 3000 You are in the deficit. That's why there has not been progress. Oh, when, when I found Jesus, I came to the end of my searching. <laughs> or any other search I'm searching is within him, discovering him because he has the depth, the height, the width, the breadth. He's an unsearchable. He has this unsearchable depth that you cannot finish exhausting in this life. Scripture talks about the unsearchable riches of Christ. A new year has just come here. The greatest thing I'm going to put before you is to develop hunger for God. A passion for God is one of the greatest force of transformation. It changes a man. It doesn't matter what, who you were before you have this in, encounter. I, I gave my life to Christ at the age of... That's why I now I still have commitment to the federal secondary schools in Nigeria. They hold their annual conferences, come from different federal schools. I go. I don't, I don't feel like I'm a big man. What am I doing with secondary school kids? No. I don't have so much time anymore. I have so many things, you know, whatever. But I still want to because... It was in secondary school that Jesus reached me. It was in secondary school. And I've started deviating in life. I've started. I've started. But I, I think I, I've not gone too far. But even those who have gone very far, God is still able to reach them. I don't think I had gone too far because even as a bad boy then, I still had conscience. I get home and stay in, awake in the night, wondering over some of the things we just finished doing. But a small bad boy, the devil was trying to train for future jobs. But thank God that he reached me and reached me early. Somebody asked me once, have you backslidden him before? I said, no. He said, why? <laughs> I said, if you test the real deal, where are you backsliding to? If you have met Jesus, if you meet Jesus, there is no alternative to him. How can somebody meet light and backslide? Where are you backsliding to? What is the alternative to light? The only option available is Darkness. I have been in it before. I am not, have no plan to return back there. Amen. So every beginning of the year, begin the year with first fruit. Find something that will present the place of God in your life and go and offer to him. The Bible says, honor the Lord with the first fruit of all your increase and then it unleashes on parallel prosperity in your life. That is not, it's not the giving that is a point. It's the fact that you are acknowledging God as first. And um, I'm providing all kinds of direction to our people at this time, like I normally do. And this is also a time we have called for prayers and fasting. Uh, uh, we're taking it, we're stretching it to 50 days. I think most years I've stopped it at the 40th day. This year we're stretching it to 50 days. So it's going to 
continue till the last Sunday of February. Shall we see? But January is the beginning of the month here according to our calendar and um, is a month of first fruits. Just like the morning is the first fruit of the day and how you treat the morning affects the whole day. The morning is when you wake up, you begin by acknowledging God in the day. He said, in all your ways, acknowledge him. He shall direct your path. The beginning of the year, you also acknowledge God. And don't just acknowledge him in someone. Acknowledge him in your finances. Get his partnership. Get him involved in your life this year. Genesis chapter 1. The Bible said, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. Anytime you want to begin something, lay the foundation with God. Societies that are built on such foundations, you still see like United Kingdom, U.S., even their currency, even their, their national, uh, uh, the political system, everything. They lay the foundation with God. I, I, was, I had a document where I was studying how the founding fathers of the U.S. Uh, gave them their constitution. The particular room where they held all those constitutional conferences is still there. They will come there and lay on the floor and pray and pray for hours. What are they praying? For guidance, for wisdom. After praying, they will rise up and sit on that conference table and start creating laws. They, they wanted laws so righteous that it will govern this nation for hundreds of years. They said they want a wisdom that is beyond human, that after building, laying the foundation of this nation, hundreds of generations will rise. They will still look at the wisdom of people who were there 300 years before, and their own wisdom has not been able to beat it. That's why you don't amend American constitution the way you do. It's not like we do here. I think in their national history, I don't know how many amendments they have had. And if you even look at those like Sistine Amendment and other, some of the things that he has affected, the real body of the constitution is still intact. Of course, recently, um, darkness has, has been making major assault on that document. Just like he's trying to, he's made a lot of assault on the Bible. Is making a lot of us major assault. You see, like this amendment now, the constitution said marriage is between a man and a woman. Now, cannot be between two women or two men. See such so stupid things. See, see where they. Are. South Africa has followed them now. They've also amended. They passed it into law. A woman can marry a woman. Men can marry men, and they will get all the rights a husband and wife can get before the law. That's what you do in January. So, America, by acknowledging God first, they laid a foundation that can withstand the test of time. That's how it is in everything. In the beginning, God. And what the book of Genesis was about to discuss here in chapter 1 is creation. When last did you hear that Jupiter and Mars crashed? You know how many accidents? Do you know you have more planets more objects flying in space, I mean more heavenly bodies out there than all the human beings plus the animals, plus the trees, plus the, the insects, plus the fishes in the water, plus all the cars and aircraft and everything put together multiplied by 100. Yet you have never had one accident in space. And they're all moving. The Bible talks about world without end. How do you build a, a house that can last for 200 billion years? One house. How do you build a gigantic? Do you know how big the planet is? This planet Earth? And then it's one of the small ones. What kind of wisdom did that? So when people who are wise want to start anything they start by acknowledging this man they start by bringing him into on the scene 
taking his guidance, taking his advice, taking his counsel, taking his wisdom, and actually asking for his help, his cooperation, his assistance, his grace, and they succeed. So every beginning that begins with God will be sustained. The ones that minuses God already has a future pronounced. His failure is going to crash. We know about the rise and fall of civilization. Whenever society minuses God from his social life, doom, he has spelled his doom. So in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And then verse 6 said, and God said, and God said, he said, let there be light, and there was light. So there were seven days of creation. The seventh day was a day of rest. The seventh day was the day God rested. So he blessed the seventh day and sanctified it as a sabbatical day or a sabbat day. The word sabbat simply means rest, as a day of rest, as a day of refreshing. I read in Exodus, he said, and God rested from all his works and was refreshed. It's amazing. God was refreshed. All the energy that went out came back. If God could be refreshed, then human beings need refreshing. God who is a spirit being. Virtue came out of God after those six days of work. And God rested. Now, see the point. This year is 2007. Is day seven of the new millennium. Is a year of rest. So if you are to read Deuteronomy chapter 15, you see some of the things that God said should happen every seven years. It's a year that you pronounce rest and release upon people. People should not be allowed to suffer under heavy burden anymore. People should not be allowed to remain in some form of suffering or the other. For example, you have to just look at the different types of bondages that exist to know what God is setting people free in a year like this. There are spiritual bondages. Mm -hmm. There are mental bondages. Mental captivity. Oh, the, the chief is ignorance. The other types. Lack of direction. Visionlessness. All of that. There's no way man is going with all those things. Of course, the ultimate we know in the physical sense is madness. Mental illness. Then there is physical captivity physical bondage. What is that? Sickness. Man is incapacitated physically. As some you see, for example, you see a blind man, you can tell the organs that are affected. You can tell for a crippled man on a wheelchair. You can tell for a dumb man. But those are the visible organs because they are positioned on the exterior part of the body. What about the internal ones? There are some, the kidneys are not functioning. The other. God doesn't want that. That means this year, we're going to take the healing and the saving power of Christ to people. Remember that spiritual darkness includes things like people who are bound by sin, bound by different habits, bound by a number of other things. Now, this is a year where Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy. He wants you to remove the yoke of slavery, the one that is a heavy burden that wears people down. So, and um, you can keep going. Financial captivity or bondage. Are people, is in their finances. They are healthy, but they are in financial wheelchairs. They are financially deaf and dumb. They are financially blind and so on and so forth. Nothing is happening in that area. This is a year for you to escape that captivity and enter back into your liberty. And not just that, enter into. But one of the things, if you are to study the sabbatical year, so you have sabbat of days, you know, every seven days. You also have sabbat of years. One of the things God said about the sabbatical year is that release should be pronounced. So it doesn't just happen. It has to be announced. And you know that if amnesty is granted, um, to prisoners, somebody has to announce it for it to be effected. And it has to be a man that is an authority. And that's why I, uh, there are some things I, I want to give you now that will help you. Because you are going to join in setting other people free. 
This year is a year of liberty. Can I hear you say amen? amen? All it takes is to announce it. What it takes to qualify you to announce is to be a man under authority. That's why Jesus said, Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpent. If you are not authorized, you cannot make that announcement and it will happen. And I mean, a normal citizen cannot just go to prison and say, I set you people free. A judge can do that. A governor can grant some level of amnesty, pardon. The president can do that. You see? So that's why Jesus picked you and empowered you, made you kings and priests. That's what I read at the beginning. We are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and so on and so forth. Called out of the darkness of this world so that we might show for the praises of him who has called out of the darkness of this world into his marvelous light. We are the ones that he chose. We are the peculiar generation, the people he selected who are authorized by God now to go and set other people free. You don't have to worry about how it will be done. For example, the judge has, it's not the job of the judge to arrest people. His job is to announce it. You see, your job is not to open the eyes of the people. Your job is to pronounce the eyes open. There are forces whose job is to carry your words out, to implement it. The police force, the military, and all of these other paramilitary agencies or these other agencies that are designed in state, there are so many of them, are the ones there to carry out the words of the people in authority, the executives. When, 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 when a president pronounces something, According to the law, he has done his part. And because we're in a kingdom, we're not in a democracy. We're not in a democracy. There are some things that the president is restricted from doing. His power is limited because he has to go and refer to the Senate. He has to refer to the Senate. And according to the constitution, there are all most democracies. Uh, uh, to form a quorum, how, what does it take to form a quorum in the Senate? Is it one third or two third? I, I thought it was one third to form a quorum, but two third to make, to one third to form a quorum, but two third to pass a law. But in the kingdom, it's not one third, it's where two or three. So when you need to consult members of the Senate, you don't need to call for all the senators. Just get two people in agreement. Get one person, you already form a quorum. Get two, you have formed a perfect one. You can blow on anything. But the issue is that you are giving power without even consulting other Senate members. But where there is disagreement, where we don't have, we have no rich agreement on what is the policy of the government or what is the will of God on the matter, then you, you have to come into agreement with others. If I'm here binding Yeradoa from being the president, I'm not doing that anyway. Yes, because on such matters, um, the best thing is to ask God to execute his will, ask for his will to be executed, not to go and start binding human beings. Yes. But let's assume God has now spoken to us that he doesn't want that government, that is not his will. The devil is trying to, you know, sabotage the destiny of this nation. Then, in that case, we have a, something to base our action on. So, just two or three, two or three, a husband and wife enough. If they have a child, they can add. Because sometimes in certain matters, maybe family matters, you don't need to, you and your husband coming into agreement can just, and then all you have to do is do, declare certain things and there are forces, they are already available. You are not creating the forces. Your job is to pass a legislation and they will move into motion. Angels of different calibers there are groups and rankings. There are some that are fierce looking. There are even some that look, there are, there are some that have four, four faces. They have different types. You have police, you have the army, you have air force, submarine, you know, the army. You have, God has all of them. So, 
until you use your authority, God does not release his power. But the moment you exercise your authority, because you are somebody in government, you are a king. And this is a kingdom. This is a kingdom. This is a kingdom. This is not a democracy. This is a kingdom. And where the word of the king is, what? There is power. In a kingdom, you rule by decrees. But we as kings are subordinate kings to Christ. I hope you know that. We are kings under his government. You know, like Abacha used to have, um, I mean, the military presidents used to have governors, military governors. They are also kings in their own rights, in their own states, in their own domain, but they're under his government. So they have authority to function, but they must not violate his own authority. So that's why as we function, the only thing we respect is not certain, is the constitution, the word of God, and the will of the one that we represent, that we submit to. His will. We don't, you know, contradict him. We don't go against his will because the authority we have must be backed by his throne. That's all. Because if you look at all the changes that God made in the book of Genesis chapter 1, he functioned like a king who had power to make things happen. All the Bible said is, and God what? Said. And what? And God said. And God said. He just issued re- legislation, made decrees, prophesied into situations, and things began to change. And that's exactly, and those words he said hundreds of, I mean, billions of years back, are still holding creation in place. That's how we can set laws. For example, you see the ocean. The Bible said not only that God made the waters, he told the dry ground to appear. He set a decree for the waters not to pass their boundaries. So you see the wave, it will rise like this. Once he get to the boundary, he will apply brakes, 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 brakes. I, I know one or two times he, he came on the road in VI, he came on the road. But you know, when you're applying brakes, you know, then you say, okay, yeah, boundary. He will now go back. The guy will rise, rise. He say, ah, all these buildings, food. And the shark will say, please rise higher. He will rise. He say, no way. There's a boundary. There's a decree. Please there. By God Almighty, this is your limit. So when you hear about tsunamis, and all this coming on land. There are some other principles that the human beings that live in those lands are tampered with. The same thing that made Noah's flood come. <laughs> hmm? that, that Asian tsunami. Don't think it was a normal thing. It wiped some cities from the map. That same thing that made fire fall on Sodom and Gomorrah. You heard about the, the one that happened in the, the, is it the southern part of the U.S.? What is that? This is the end of this part. Please play the next tape in the series.